Hey, Mo, we need to get an intro down for this channel, you know. Yeah, but what are you thinking, Lee? Why not a wrap over the top of it? Don't be ridiculous. You sound like a northern m and Look, listen to me. Yo, yo, yo. The munch brunch in the hoose, man. Absolutely not. Right, what you got in mind? Let's just keep it simple. I'm Lee. I'm A. They wear the munch brunch. Back to another mukbang with Emily. We are the Munch Munch UK. Lee. How are we doing, guys? How are we doing, Emma? Tell them what we have on the menu today. We have a variation of a Sunday roast with like roast chicken with a giant Yorkshire pudding. So, like a town hall with a roast dinner in it. Um, you get them in the pub, don't you, normally? Like, yeah. you can have like a giant Yorkshire pudding with everything inside but of it. They're never normally this big because I go big when I do them. We use like the casserole dishes. That's yeah. it, casserole dish. Yeah. Yeah, like an oven proof casserole dish. And did it in there. Check out her Instagram if you want to see pictures. That was quite funny. Wow. An oven proof casserole dish. They do go in the oven. <laughs> yeah, but that's what they're saying. It's, oh, it's oven proof. Don't worry about it, Bob. You can stick it in the oven. You won't know, put one in that's not oven proof because it'll shatter and ruin mm. your dinner. But yeah, I said I fancy giant Yorkshire puddings. I just want to stick a pizza in the oven nice and easy, but we ended up with this. So, happy days. Cover the salt, please, Aim, Mom. Yes, and it is Easter Sunday today that yeah. we're filming this. What's in it, Aim? Well, I, I think what's in this one? Green beans and things. You got, you got green beans, cauliflower, broccoli. Broccoli. I've got garden peas. I'm not really a fan of cauliflower. There is a bit of cauliflower in here. Green beans, mash, chicken, and mashed potato. Because I won't mess around doing rouse today. And mint sauce. Yeah. Gravy. Oh my god! I put a lot of salt in. Let's all have a go, Lee. What is salt intake? Well, uh, boo hoo! You're not the one in my body. So don't worry about it. Um. So, what are you... I mean, people have roast lamb sometimes at Easter. I never used to have anything at Easter apart from Easter eggs. So I didn't really think of it as like we need to have a special meal <laughs> for Easter. Mm. But now, since being with you, I know that a lot of people do 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 a lot of like celebrating and stuff at Easter. Well, we don't really celebrate like that. No, but but other people do. They like make an effort. You oh, always yeah. do a turkey dinner. Well, I'm doing one in the week. My dad coming. Yeah, we had um, a spare turkey from Christmas, as you do, because we bought two and only used one. So it's been in the freezer since November. We said we'll use it at Easter, and we haven't used it. Mm -hmm. Oops. Oops. If you've got kids, have they all had a, a nice Easter Sunday? Have you got them a lot of eggs? Yeah. These days, it's frowned upon, though, isn't it? Because like, back when we were kids, the like, more eggs you get, the better parent you are. But nowadays, it's like, no. Eggs are bad. Eggs lead to obesity and bad teeth and bad behaviour. Well, not, not specifically eggs. I think they're on about chocolate in general. Yeah, the amount of eggs I used to get as a kid would definitely be frowned upon these days. When I got older, oh. I was saying like when I got older, but we didn't like. Um, I don't well, know what's going on, but I feel like it's just. It's because the yolk pudding's high. Normally, if you think about foods, normally about there, <laughs> whereas it's about two foot higher. I feel like I've just got a head floating about. But no, um, like my mum had said, if you don't want Easter egg anymore, like everybody mm. just give each of them money. Like it's a really strange one, really. Tia usually sounds like a gift or something. I would say, well, do you want a game for your Xbox or PlayStation, or like um, you know, the the add-ons you get for games, new characters and stuff. I would just get her a couple of those. Mm. My mum has to go about extra, like my mum's like eggs and 20 quid. Yeah. But all I remember, what's your memories of being Easter? So I remember when I was a kid, we used to make like chickens or something in school. Yeah, like, um, but, oh, chicks in baskets. Yeah, we used to make like cornflake baskets and put a lot of mini eggs oh, no. in there. Oh, yeah. But I mean, it's like card decorations. It oh, was yeah, we like make a, cards, an yeah. egg or a chicken. A... Mm hmm. I was walking to the shop the other day and uh, one of the school kids, young ones obviously, um, had dropped a card. I was like, that's a shame for him. And that was like all um, Easter-y looking sort of stuff. Oh, that's horrible. That oh. made the effort to do that. Sorry guys, I forgot to lock in the colour. Not as well, I know what that is. No, the brightness on the on the screen, otherwise it alters. Yeah, somebody had lost a card, but that's a shame for him. I think that, the, like nowadays, they have like Easter bonnet um, parades and... In the schools mm -hmm. now, they make your own Easter. Some parents go all out, they've got you know, big Easter egg hunts around the house and stuff like that. Yeah. But 
like this year would be perfect to do something like that, wouldn't it? Like give well, as long as it's in the house, yeah. Yeah, like the kids something fun to do. Now, if my mum tried to add my Easter eggs as a kid, I oi, love. What the hell have you done with me eggs? Don't so hide she never, them. she never hid them. No, I never hid them. It was like well, I remember I had a lot, like from the family and friends and stuff. And oh, we'd buy for our friends' kids. Was it getting a bit messier? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. That's the trouble, though, isn't it? As well, when you've got like big families. Yeah, I guess so. The trouble is the price, in my opinion. For like a real good Easter egg nowadays, you can be looking at about 10 quid upwards. Like for the lint eggs and the Thorntons, I'm like, it's just sodding chocolate. It tastes pretty much the same as a Twix one or a Maltesers one. Everything's a money making thing now. Mm -hmm. And I'll remember, and I'm sure a lot of you can um, agree with this one, the amount of sodding cups you ended up with. We had so many cream egg cups. Even now as adults, Tia, like um, when she was younger and us as adults, you got in our cup cupboard at one point, seven or eight cups from Easter eggs. And mini egg cups and cream egg cups. It's like, what the hell? I'll throw them away. Yeah, we do get rid of a lot of our cups. Every couple of years, I'm like, right, it's time for a clear out. I like Let's to get rid have of the matching cups. cups. I'm, I, I really do. And I'm not saying that we use the matching cups. But when people come round, I have matching cups from Sainsbury's. Mm. A bit of a... And it's weird, because the Panasar family in EastEnders, they've got the same cups. So I know where they've got them from. But it's when he popped round here. What's his name? The main one out of the Panasar's? Kira. Kira, he popped round here. Check out our rat infestation problem, because that's what they do <laughs> in EastEnders. And then he said, can we monk her? I said, no. She's a bit of a cow. We don't want her around here. So keep her away. Yeah. And then he said, okay. But I do like your cups. I'm going to get some for the set. And that was it. That's the way it went. I like it when you see, they point it out like on websites and stuff, on Twitter. Mistakes that were made in TV shows when they, like, they've left a bottle of Evian in like Downton Abbey. That was somewhere. it, they left one on the fireplace. Oh, you stupid artists. You'd think they'd pay someone to go around checking that all the bottles are pop. Like, you didn't have bottles of Diet Coke. Back in bloody 1920. <laughs> it's been around a lot of years, Coke. Hasn't I it? I love, things around about them. I love Downton Abbey. Mm. We've watched... Uh, you tried to get me to watch the film recently. I fell asleep halfway through. I've watched it like three times now. Mind you, I love the series. Love it. I was getting into the crown, but I kind of got out of that. Oh, it is into the crown. I would like it if I could guarantee it was all true, but when you hear how much it is dramatised, it's like, well, if I really want to know if Diana was doing what she was doing, and if Prince it, Charles it was really was really shagging good, the Dad. Spaniel, I want to know the truth. Not yeah, some of it's true and some of it isn't, that's just no good. Who puts mint sauce in the gravy? Not all the time. No, like it's I all can smell from here is mint sauce. It was that dead weird because... At my school, there was a chip shop round the corner. And I don't know why this happened. Good God knows why. But everybody put mint sauce on the chips. That's wrong on so many levels to me. It was like a running thing. Mint sauce. Uh, the only thing running around that with me would be running away from it. Well, get away with your mint sauce. Keep it off my chips. Who knows? Might it, it. No. You know what I have been watching? What? Well, me and I last week. I'm sure a lot of you lot watched it. Um, oh, yeah. Ross Kemp and like Britain's Tiger Cubs and Lions and that stuff. Bloody yeah. nuts some people are. Yep. Going down to see Barry. Where are Barry? Been up to? I've got a lion. He's in the back garden. Okay. I've got four dogs or five dogs. Um, do you want to swap? And some of the idiots on there, like the bloke at the beginning, this bloke called Reese something, he lives, um, I think he lives in, in the Midlands, I might be wrong, or down south somewhere. He's like, yeah, I've got these lion cubs, and oh my god, look at, no, not cubs, sorry, lions and tigers, and all of a sudden one got really ill whilst the camera crew was there, he's like, it yeah. It was very convenient, that was, in my opinion. You didn't just, like, pretend to do that, did you, Reese, or plan it? What's the chances that you can make, look really heroic whilst the camera crew's there? Because basically, my back garden is bigger than their enclosure. Mm. It's not fair, the size Our front garden is bigger than their enclosure. It was just... But at the beginning, he's like, oh, I write him, I do. Look, he was really looking after yeah, his animals. Yeah, because it was like, 
he rescued these um, lions that were going to be put to sleep and all mm. this. And then it was just, it was pretty bad, wasn't it? That the I hate when they're like, like on come down. I've said this before. And you got bloody Sherry there, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm just uh, having a little soak in the bath with the cameraman <laughs> recording me." <laughs> I'm gonna go and get the dinner ready in a minute. Or like the dinner's that in is the so oven. Funny. And you got Sherry there, glass of champagne in one hand, bloody candles all around the bath. And what? The cameraman just sat there watching you having a bloody bath, love. You know what? Do you come in once you're already in there? Have you got a costume on underneath? Like swimming costume? No, it is a bit stupid, that. And that bloke did it in that Tiger program at the end. He's like, "Yes, uh, Reese is now relaxing in his favourite way." In his hot tub, yeah. Got the hot tub there, got a glass of booze on the go, the tigers in front of him or the lions, whichever he had. Mm. He's like, Yeah, it's how I relax every day. Like, we don't need to see in the hot tub race. Get out of there and feed your bloody animals. I don't, he did feed them, it was just the He's wondering at the price of the food though. He's got a bloody hot tub. And if you're wondering why guys like some you might say one hand on and one just letting you know, I haven't forgot to paint this one, I've just It's a trick of the eye. No, it, it was cruel though. That enclosure wasn't big enough at all. But then again, however, saying that, how do you well, feel about zoos? How do you guys feel about zoos? When I'm there, I it's feel... It's like an entertainment thing, isn't it? Yeah. You're like, oh my God, look, there's a kangaroo and whatnot. It's really good, but when you look at it, it is a bit, um, you yeah, know, it's a bit cruel. Well, not just a little bit cruel, it's really cruel. But on the other hand... Would you be happy knowing that there's in the wild? And that's the argument. I ain't got people say, should we in the wild where they can hunt and kill and also risk being killed themselves? Or are they better to be in captivity where they're safe? I think some endangered animals, obviously, in captivity, they can be bred again to be kept. Yeah, but going. some need to be in their own environment to be able to breed. Like, they're just not... You can't make them do it. Like, I heard one where they, they put... Um, what was it now? Tortoises or something. There was some animal they were trying to get to re recreate, like, Rich mate. Juice. Yeah. And they put on, like, tortoise porn from or something like that. And you're like, it didn't work anyway. And, the, the you know, Terry, the tortoise, he was just he was interested in the porn. He was just, like, wanting to look out of the glass at the passers-by. And imagine that, like, you just made to sit there, like, now have sex in front of 5,000 people who are passing through the zoo every day. And don't feel awkward about it at all. <laughs> it's when the monkeys go for it, isn't it? That's funny. Mm. Dirty good side, nobody carries around. <laughs> no, but some of these, I mean, this one on Tuesday, there's a map. Can I have a bit of that as well? Yeah. There's I never man, had salt to the Yorkshire puddings before, and that's a problem. There's a man um, having an alligator, having an alligator, has an alligator in his house or something or other. I, I won't mean. mess with that with an alligator. The people in Florida, they're, they're brave buggers, they man. Liz, I think you're in Florida if you're watching this at the minute. I know you want us to come and visit one day. You've suggested, said we can. you've got a house there ready for his mum's going to let us rent, uh, you know, live in one of her rooms and stuff. I've seen what goes down in Florida. There was a clip the other day on TikTok. There's an alligator. Like say we're over at Tesco. Like, oh yeah, well, there's a man walking his dog, not a problem. In, our, in Florida, you're outside Tesco. There's an alligator walking underneath the car. But they live there, they live in the Everglades. Yes, they also walk down the street sign. Yeah. Yeah. What, what mm -hmm. do you mean? Yeah. They've become accustomed to it. Like, they don't really hot bother you too much. Well, if you're new to the area, But well, they're not going to think, oh, that's a new bloke down the road. Let's go no, the new bloke course. down the road's going to think, oh, shit, there's an alligator. I'm not used to this. Let's get out of here. And then run. I ain't messing with nobody alligators. I was watching, like, someone, like a makeup artist... And she said, Jacqueline, if you know, and she was like, um, yeah, they just sort of go on the back embankments a bit and you just move away. I mean, yep, that's completely normal behaviour for people who live in the UK to see. Like, <laughs> I've, in the past... I'll tell I... you a story about something which reminded me of an alligator. Okay. What's that? Well, I, in the past, when I was in a homeless person with a dog, um, on more than one occasion, if I've been going into a supermarket and sat outside... I'll bring out a tin of dog food or a dog treat or something for the dog. It only happened a couple of times. If I see a man with an alligator, what the... I don't know what to bring it out. A bit of steak. Ain't going to go down very far, is it? You'd have to find somebody who's really down on the look who didn't mind losing an arm or something for a few quid. 
I'm like, do you need your arm? No, okay, here's the tenner. And then give him the arm? I'll keep him busy for a while. So basically, when me and Quip first moved in with each other, we stayed for a short period of time with a friend whilst we got our things, hair sorted out. And uh, she had a iguana called Iggy. This thing was huge, and I'm telling you, <coughs> its tail was like, I want to say like that. Probably like the, its tail was its length of its body and then some. So she used to have this huge tank in the living room. Like heat lamps in and it ate like vegetables, you cut it all, lettuces and up every single day. But anyway, she went away and she said to me and Queen, Can you look after Iggy? This is what you have to do. Whatever you do, don't let it escape. It's not very original though, is it calling you Iguana Iggy? And it's really cool, a decent name for it. Well, it's fitting anyway. So, <laughs> we opened the little thing to feed it and cut up all of its food and everything like that. And it must have known. He thought, oh, she's away. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run off. It ran out the damn thing, the tank. And I was on the set. He had like a single duvet on there, just, you know, as you do. It ran out and up the curtain... And then it jumped on the top of me. But I knew this thing was going to come for me. I just froze, like. So I put the duvet on top of my head and I was lying down like that. I was like, Queen, get this iguana off me. He was scared of it as well. I mean, this is Aim who, when I have to go near Barney to put a collar on him the other day, uh, she puts her fingers in her ears in case Barney gets angry or barks or bites me. Yeah. So I imagine what she'll be like with an iguana on her head. <laughs> anyway. So... Because it was a hot day, we had the back door open. It bloody jumped off me, ran out the house and up the wall of the house. So, Quint managed to get it on, like, the broom handle. And then all you saw was Quint running in with the iguana on the broom. But then he froze because it started running up the broom. And I was like, quick! Can we agree it's an American broom? It's a brush. Brush, brush broom, whatever. <laughs> he got it back in the tank anyway. Oh. Give that a minute. I'd just move it's out. It's tail. What scared me the most? If the tail caught you, it whip, it, you'd bleed like really bad. It, it swung its tail. And she was like, yeah. And she showed me like the scar and that on her arm. No, you don't miss the biggies. And you go on. Well, you go on a driver. He's like, it'll really hurt you like. Give that a miss. What I'd have done? I'd have rang her up. Love, your guana's out. I'm moving out. Let me know when you're home and the iguana is back in its home, its cage or whatever, and I'll move back in then. Until then, the iguana's taken over the asylum. <laughs> when I was at Animal Care, um, which is like a dog and cat sanctuary, but they had all sorts up there from rabbits to horses and pigs and goats. We, uh, this lady came in, I've told the story, but we've got more subscribers, you probably haven't heard it now. And this lady came in and she says, well, my mum's passed away. Um, I need you to look after the cat. Or like, take it in for us and rehome it. Um, the, I can't have it around the house. I think she had mm. dogs or something. Or just the reminder of her mum was too much for her. So I said, yeah, we can. Not a problem. My boss, Steve, at the time. Lee, can you take the cat? Get it set up in the cat room. They'd drawn, like, pen uh, with bed and scratch pails and food and water and blankets. It was really well looked after in a heat lamp. I'm up there getting this cat settled. I don't know about the cat's history. I don't know if it's a crazy cat, mm -hmm. if it's a friendly cat. Because oh, we had some crazy ones. This one, it would never ever get re rehomed. I can't remember her name now. She was a black and white cat. Aww. Feral she was, basically. And you'd walk in and she'd jump on top of the kennel and then jump on your back and scratch the hell out of you. Oh, no, God. You literally had to go in there with a, really gat, like a proper mask on and everything to protect your face. She just... <laughs> Scratch you to That'd hell. That would scare the life out of me. But the more you was with her, the more comfortable she got, which was always like rewarding and she'd get settled. Yeah. This cat, I opened the, like, it's cat holder, K, uh, carrier. carrier, yeah. I put it on the shelf, just to, like, give it time to come out on its own, on its own accord. I turn around, get the blankets, and I've left the door open of the of its kennel, of its pen, and the main door of the cattery. I don't think anything. I don't think it's going to be about 10 minutes before it comes out. A lot of cats are quite nervous. They won't venture out for a while. I look oh, round. The cat's come out. And oh, right there, little Pete. Whatever the hell it's called. I don't know what the name of the cat was. Little Pete didn't want to have a stroke. 
he shot past me through the first door of the pen, <laughs> out the door of the main cattery, of the ca- the main oh, door of the cattery. I legged after this cat. The lady's there in tears in the reception, filling out the paperwork. <laughs> she sees me shoot past. I'm like running like a bloody whippy. I was a lot lighter then, so I can move quicker. I was like, cat! And then I was like, oh, I can't say out too loud, because she's in there, I wanted to know what I'm running for. This cat legged it, and we was based out in the countryside. I ran it, chased it all around the, um, the animal centre. It found a field, legged it across the field, and I ran after it. And then after about five, I was like, I ain't catching this bloody cat. I just stood there like, come here, kitty, 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 for like 20 minutes. And then my mate at the time, Dan, come and said, well, you don't worry about it. We've all lost a cat or two in our time. I said, yeah, mate, but not whilst the owner's still in the bloody reception. You're lucky that it wasn't a boarding cat. Well, I've always, she's still impressed though. My mum had died the week before. Did she find out? Yeah. Oh. She stood there watching me chase the bloody cat. Oh, no, that mm. mean. But what I'm saying is, I think it, it would have been worse. If she, well, it would have been better if she didn't know. Mm. But it would have been worse if it was a boarding cat, like. Oh, yeah, she's coming expecting to, stay to get the for cat a holiday. Back. Imagine that. I can't take my eyes off what you've done with your dinner here, Ryan. What the hell is it? It's like slosh. It's become a little bit. of a mess. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good job you can't see above this camera. Yeah, it's a bit. Imagine that. So you take your dog or your cat to a boarding kennel and it goes missing. Mm. That's probably happened more than... Oh, it happened to me on about five occasions. So we did, they didn't used to do boarding there. It was always rehoming, but we'd have to take the dogs out. Between me and three or four of the staff, we had to walk about 20 dogs. So it was like four dogs a day. The shop was quite far away from the centre. Now, if I was walking past the shop, I'd pop in, buy a newspaper, some crisps and a drink and some chocolate for my lunch or whatever. I'd tie the dog up outside. I'll be literally two minutes. I can see the dog from where I am in the shop. I'd come out. The dog weren't there. Oh, These dogs, well, they're like magicians. I'd be chasing these dogs for a good two or three hours. I didn't want it. I've got Steve, my boss. Um, yeah, I, I sort of like... Um, the dogs escaped, basically. How's that happen, Luke? Uh, well, I, I don't know. It just escaped, Steve. He's just gone. <laughs> come and help me. And he'd come down with two or three other staff members and we'd be up and down these bloody hills and down the lanes. We always got the dogs back, but I did lose about four dogs. And he kept saying, don't tie the dog. I won't do, Steve, I won't do. I didn't think all these dogs could talk between themselves at night time. Look, if you want to tie a lead outside a shop, this is how you do it. And they, they train each other up. Oh, I think that's quite dangerous nowadays. Well, it is nowadays. There was a lot. everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. It was on the New Jersey, two Labradors in the area, in the Midlands. Left outside a shop. Why the hell you'd leave two Labradors outside a shop? This is that the reason misses. you did? You thought it no, was okay to do? Not these days I wouldn't think it was right to do. Anyway, they got dog napped. Um, they got them back now, but it was a, a week later until the police found them. I read a story about a little puppy that was four weeks old. They broke in and took the puppies off their mum. That's just nasty. Mm. The worst part about that is probably someone's come around to view the puppies. And then I put a call into a mate or something or other. Mm, no. Otherwise, how would you know that they were there if they were only four weeks old? It's just na- reckless, disastrous behaviour, that is. I just don't understand. Some like knobheads around. Like, I watched a funny one, though. It was like a retribution sort of thing of it. Somebody nicked a dog. And they, they um people, I can't say what, what they are or what they were, stole a dog. And this bloke, I think he'd seen them on the CCTV outside his house. So he, he found them anyway where they lived. He went in, he beat the crap out of the bloke and got the dog back. Two rods. Do you know a squirrel can fall about 50, no, 80 foot, I think it is, from a tree land. and land and not have an issue with it? Oh, they jump as well, really well. Yeah, but what some squirrels do. I like the way you say squirrel. Squirrel? Is this another one? Is it tortoise or tortoise? Just a squirrel? Are well, you on the bed? It's just nice. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so squirrel? S- squirrel, yeah. We can't keep saying it and sound odd. It just sounds funny. So some squirrels anyways, <laughs> a certain brand or breed of squirrel will get jealous of one squirrel. Like, Hello, I want the lady squirrel. You're not having it. And they'll actually climb the tree and throw the mate out of the tree. <laughs> it's no word of a lie. They throw them out of the tree. Not knowing that they're going to land safely, 
But thankfully, these screws can fall at 80 foot and not have any uh, uh, scratch on them or anything. And there's just clips, apparently, of screws being thrown out of trees by other screws. Like, get out of here. She's <laughs> my lady now. And then the other screw has to climb back up the tree. And then he throws that. And then the lady screw never gets any because they're all, the lads are too busy throwing each other out of trees. I tell you where I find funny. There's always two pigeons mating on our fence. Mm. There's always that fence as well. It's never that one. Dirty buggers. I was telling them in the WhatsApp group about it yesterday. Screw up oh, about it. Pigeons. Yeah, the pigeons in our garden, they don't pay any rent. They don't ask permission. They're always bonking on the bloody fence or in the tree above our house. <laughs> they really are, and they make a lot of noise as well. It's always the same noise, isn't it? Well, yeah, I don't think they've like, discovered other sex noises, though. No. Oh. make the sound of a pigeon, not... Oh, yeah, like... Flap, flap, flap. No. Well, they don't say flap, but you can hear they them. They go... No, I don't think that's when they're doing it there. I think that's no, right. I'm never... Does everything have to be about that? I'm on about just a general pigeon noise. We were just on about it there. I wasn't on about pigeons. What? You well, don't even say it there. I said there's a lot of pigeons mating on the fence. You have to go in depth. Oh, well. And say, you know. So we have an pigeons. issue here. I'm not going to eat her dinner. <laughs> you want to I can see you stalling now. <laughs> Your word was, let's make a giant Yorkshire yeah. pudding. And now you're not eating it. I am eating it. So, mm. I was listening to a podcast whilst I was making this. This um, I was. Who was the podcast? Joe Rogan. With Miss Pat. And she's a comedian in America. Lovely lady. Very um, <laughs> industrial with the way she speaks is, what I'll, is the way I'll put it. Industrial? Yeah, basically she's got a couple of, she had a couple of children when she was young. Um, and she was in like eighth grade, whatever that is in America. I don't know what age that is. When she started seeing a grown man, and he was like a drug dealer, um, and he got her pregnant, and then he ended up in prison, and she was like twelve years old or something like that, or thirteen years old, I oh. think. And she has like a couple of children, and then her daughter or someone she knew turned up on her doorstep, saying, "Need you to look after my baby now," and because it's like the way she is. The baby's mum was uh, on crack, on cocaine. So she calls them my crack babies. And she looks after them. She's brought them up really well and everything like that. She was? Calls them her crack babies. They're her children's They're children. They're her, like a friend of somebody, just dumped these two children on her. And she's like, well, she didn't have a good upbringing, a good start in life because of her mum. Her mum didn't treat her very well. Mm-hmm. Her mum's da- uh, fellow abused her and stuff like that. So she said, I'm never going to like... Give up on children. I want all children to have a good start in life. Oops. <laughs> Bloody hell, that's a good job. I didn't go well, everywhere. Oh, but it did, Lee. Well, only went a little bit on there, not everywhere. Anyways, like, she took her on a Disney cruise last year and stuff. Like that. A really nice lady. This was a year or two ago. The podcast was done. Anyways, she said when she was younger, because she didn't have much money and whatnot, so her family was very poor. They used to, where she's from, in Atlanta or Indianapolis or somewhere like that, they used to do a lot of dog fighting. Oh, no, no, I hate the idea of that. But she she had a German shepherd called Pup Pup. And she had basically, they had no money to put in the middle for these dogs. So her and her friends would have dogs and they'd put sweets. I forget what she called them now. They'd put them in the middle. And the dogs basically would fight. And the winner, who's say it was my dog who won, I'd get the sweets. She said, if Pup Pup, her dog, was get, looking like it was going to get hurt or beaten up, she said, I'd jump in there and choke the shit out of the other dog. She said, I love wrestling dogs. So I'd just jump in there and tackle it. <laughs> Start choking it until it got off my dog. She said, then afterwards, because we didn't, couldn't afford any food and we didn't have any me- a meal that day. Didn't hit the dog. Uh, no. She said, her and Pup Pup, the dog, would just sit on the like this curb, I guess you call it. Oh, it is a curb, isn't it? And just eat the sweets. The share in between them. That'd be their dinner for the day. And we oh, complain I'm like. Sorry. Yeah, we complain sometimes about like how crap life is. Like people in general complain. We don't actually know how bad life is. Like there's something in America's town name about. It's called like a government butter. They was calling it. And you put it on like yeah. If you're a lady, you put it on your boobs or your bum to make them bigger. And that her family and people she knew believed this. And I don't know if it's true or not. Apparently, she swears by it. You can get it on Amazon, I think. And 
they'd keep it in the fridge and she'd come in one day and mum didn't found she'd put it all over her boobs when she was young because she had bigger boobs and I was like what the hell are you doing you can't waste that butter and she scraped it off a daughter and put it back in a dish or a jar or and stuck it back in the fridge and Joe was like what the hell what kind of life did you live she's like look we were poor we couldn't afford no butter we couldn't afford to waste it I mean my mum loves the pack but come on now <laughs> <laughs> No. True though. Oh god. This is the third time this week I've discussed butter with people. Oh wow. What was the conversation? Claire. The other day. What was the conversation revolving um, around? Our subscriber and best friend. Yeah. She said we were talking about like healthy butters and I says as Lee knows and some of you know after that bloody um butter sauce thing that I did, I got quite ill of but I can't eat certain butter can on no and Lur packs one of them and was, oh, no 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 so i said oh flora light and then she says oh you know she can't eat Lur pack she's i love anchor butter mm-hmm. she, but again it makes her bad the only one i can have is uh well, i can have others but i do like the um flora, flora because Lur pack really makes my stomach bad and then i thought you would just imagine that now that kind of reminded me like so all these girls out there are just smothering butter and their mum's going, no, put it back in the fridge. <laughs> so, it's like, Claire, what butter have you had today to make something bigger? Well, I've had, oh, well, I've had Lurpak. It's better than Flora. <laughs> I'm going to get a bigger set of boobs. Never. She can't handle this, look at her. Full up. I keep thinking it's about four o'clock. Oh. <laughs> Wrap us up, I'm. <sighs> I'm just going to finish my Yorkshire pudding off camera. Mm. I'm going to leave this, the inside. Because we don't need all the healthy stuff like veg. No, and I've had all my vegetables, but it's just ninety percent gravy floating around in it. Well, you did add a lot. Of, you did the same before. Is there any more gravy? Lee? I want to put some there's more. There's hardly in. any chicken. Well, there's more chicken out there, but now there's just a whole lot of gravy inside your great Yorkshire pudding. Oh, my great! He said, he said a joke. You went. Yeah, your great Yorkshire pudding. But so he was like the great Yorkshire pudding. They ain't all wrong with these Yorkshire puddings. They're badass. Just give me a job in McDonald's making these. Why McDonald's? If McDonald's started to do Yorkshire puddings... Well, why wouldn't think, you say a carvery? Because I reckon if York, McDonald's started to do these and stuck some chicken nuggets in here... Of all the restaurants, I mean, you could have chose a Toby carvery, the pub down the road, a bistro. You chose McDonald's that don't even... End, will never. I think they should start bringing out Yorkshire puddings at McDonald's, like with these ones, and their sales would rock it. I would help Well, you them. need to go to the CEO of McDonald's and sit down with him and Ronnie the Clown and say, I've got an idea. Yeah, but you've got to employ you me to make them. revolutionise McDonald's. They are missing some at the minute. I do think it is Yorkshire puddings. What would you have? Yorkshire pudding, chicken nuggets and fries. Inside the Yorkshire pudding. I've heard it possibly. Not a Yorkshire pudding inside a Yorkshire pudding. Obviously, I'd have a... This... Fries and chicken nuggets inside the Yorkshire pudding. Oh, anyway, guys. How do you reckon your mum's got on with this? My mum would like... I mum. didn't give her a full one. I did like, a, you know, the small tin. So it was like, still took up a plate. It was like that big. She'll like be that. like, Ooh, I couldn't <laughs> believe it when Tia brought me <laughs> Yeah, she was probably freaked well, out. a tiny little woman, honestly. So, I hope you enjoyed this animal issue or episode, rather. It's been all about animals. <laughs> That's all right, though. We like animals here. We have a very varied conversation threshold, don't we? Yeah, we do. Take us away, Mark. Well, I'm waiting for you. Anyway, guys, remember to be kind, remember to be nice, comment, share, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to turn on your notification bells. And press the all button so you don't miss any future videos. Check out our Munchies Delight vlog channel. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Check out our Instagram, which is on private, but you can request to follow us. And check out the community tab because sometimes Lee does post on there. If you want the recipe for the Yorkshire pudding, just type in BBC Yorkshire pudding recipe. It's off the off their website. It's really good. But I'm telling you now, who was got voted the best Me. in the country for their Yorkshire pudding recipe was a chef here. You probably all know called James Martin. And I don't know if you do this, but when I talk to you put the batter in the fridge for a couple of hours. Oh, I've never that tried is that. You, I was mine go really high. Uh, that is that is apparently the trick. Oh, well, I know. I need to know that for next time. But you are like getting so uh, 
when you start a Yorkshire pudding the week before, you want to do a better one the week after, don't you? You're still well away there, aren't you, Lee? <laughs> Carry on, love. All right, then. See you in a bit, guys. <laughs> we'll be here another five minutes now. Don't know, not yours to sort out yet. Right, uh. Love you. Bye.